every day for a week. No, for a month. It's going to be a long month. Um, in order to support remote learning, distance learning in schools, libraries, museums, art galleries, uh, and particularly, of course, homes. Uh, the work that we are doing is sent to uh, YouTube. So you can visit youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Immersive Minds to catch up on all of our live streams in the past. I'm busy working my way through the thumbnails on the videos, so excuse uh, the mess of the videos, but you can see the titles and kind of go from there. And today we're going to be exploring the importance of understanding materials in Minecraft Education Edition. I mean, any version of Minecraft, but my focus is always on Minecraft Education Edition. And so let me just save and exit this world and we can get started. So when I talk about materials, what I mean is the types of materials that you are given in uh, in Minecraft. And so I'll just start a new world. Let's just get started with a new world. Click on new and we'll always, always, I'm just going to keep reminding you about this, always name your world. So we're going to do uh, materials. There we go. We're going to make it creative because I'm just going to play around with materials now. So we've already done a stream on game settings and world settings. We've also already done a stream on getting to know the basics, movement, jumping, flying. Um, we've done mobs. Uh, what else have we done? We've done redstone. We've done some code builder. And there's much, much more of that to come over the, over the next um, month. But some people get tripped up with the materials themselves. Uh, we're going to make this peaceful because we don't want mob. Um, we do want mobs. We don't want monsters. And and it's because materials do different things and they have different um, different mechanics, uh, in game coded mechanics depending on the material. So let's explore some of those. And some of the I think what we'll do is we'll look at as well as those mechanics. We'll look at some of the most handy and useful. Uh, blocks and materials that you can use. This doesn't really matter because it doesn't, I'm not going to have kids joining me. We're going to make it an infinite world so we can play around a bit and not have a boring um, flat world. Hi Catherine and hi Catherine. I've got two Catherines in from uh, Facebook and then if we go for show coordinates, just always good practice. We're going to activate cheats. Code builder's not necessary. Actually that's not true. Let's show what code builder can do with materials later. We're going to do always day because I don't need it to be night time and we're going to make it perfect weather. Everything else can remain the same. Click play. OK, so we're into a materials world. Let's see what we get this time. I always get distracted when I go into a new world and see what that looks like. So let's see what new world. It's like new world bingo. Let's see what we've got this time. We have tiger forest. We have a kind of a redwood forest area. This is nice. I like this. Look at this guy. That's odd. That's an anomaly. There we go. I completed that. Um, and as I've mentioned on almost all of my streams, when you start a new world, you are entirely in a new world, a completely new, randomly generated world from any other you've ever seen. And so I love just having a little explore around. Look at this, this rocky, barren. This is interesting. You know what? I think we'll build over here. I think we'll make this our new home. I'm actually a fan of forests, but I think for the sake of materials, we will go over here and make this our home. And actually, it's quite good that we've done this because if I look down at the ground, I don't know if you can hear the game sounds too well, but there's a kind of a crunch under my feet. And the reason for that is because we have a very different material underneath us, which is called gravel rather than what it looks like from above is just maybe stone. So over here we have stone. So you'll see gravel and stone, two separate materials. And they have different they have different mechanics. They, they, they work differently in the Minecraft world. And I'm going to explain how in a second. Um, so let's look at gravity. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to chop this tree away. I'm going to say I don't want this tree here to be here because I'm going to build a little house here right on the edge. And if I do that, you'll notice that the tree doesn't fall down. And that puts a lot of people off. I've, I've literally had teachers say to me, yeah, I don't use Minecraft because it's not physically correct. The physics are not right. And and that's that's an opinion and that's a, that's and they're not wrong. 
Um, and because the tree didn't fall down, it's just there's a piece of air there. In fact, I could stand under it. That just doesn't make sense, right? I could get rid of the whole tree, right up to just one piece of wood holding it in. There we go, get rid of that. And over, over time, this tree will disappear slowly because it's got nothing holding it up now. So the green will disappear once all of the wood's gone. But still, in terms of gravity, that's not right. So let's explore gravity a little better. Let's start with, uh, I'm just going to use white to demo. And I'm going to do one, one, two, three, one, two, three. Then I'm going to get rid of these two. So again, concrete, this is white concrete that I'm using, is staying up in the air. And I'm going to put stone on top of that one and gravel on top of this one. Stone and gravel. And actually, for the purposes of um, oops, this demo, I'm just going to name these here. Stone. Gravel. OK. Then what I'm going to do, let me just get rid of that so it's not in my way. I'm going to remove underneath the white one that's there. And if I get rid of that, welcome room 117. This is just the lesson you've been looking for. And so this is just the lesson you're going to get. And so you'll notice when I remove that, the stone didn't fall because we've proved it with the tree and we've proved it with the white concrete. But if I hit this one, the concrete fell. Uh, sorry, the gravel fell. Correction, the gravel fell. Let's do that again. Let's get our one, two, three, one, two, three. And then we're going to place, this time I'll place, yeah, stone and gravel. We're going to get rid of this, these two and these two because we know concrete stays in the air. We've already established that. If I do this one, if I do this one, it falls. So gravity affects some blocks, not others. But which ones? So let's try. I'm just going to build my little, my usual little pillars up here again. Uh, let's build a few. Let's try. Actually, I can just do that now. OK, so let's try. We've got gravel. Let's do that. Let's also place sand and concrete. Oops, concrete powder. Um, and then let's try on the last one. Let me see if I go into here and get rid of this. And it is super early in the morning, room 117, right? You're in Redmond, I recall. What else shall we try? Pick another material, any material. We already know that uh, tree bushes stay in the air. Coral, maybe? Shall we try a coral or shall we try a slow sand or shall we try a magma? Let's try a magma block. Let's try. So we're just going to put magma. Now, today in this stream, we're going to do water and we're going to do uh, we're going to do water and we're going to do lava as well. But what did I also say? I said we were going to put sand up there. So let's get ourselves some sand. There's red sand as well. And there's also, what did we say? Concrete powder. So if we put in concrete, and then you'll see that on the bottom row are just concrete, and on the top row are concrete powders. So let's do that. So let's, we've got sand, we've got concrete powder, and we tried magma. So let's try this. Stone stays where it is. Gravel, we know falls. Sand falls. Concrete powder falls. Magma doesn't. So you can see there, if I just give you this, and actually I'm going to take a little uh, screenshot of that. 
for later because I could use this as my thumbnail. Uh, let's do new. There we go. That's going to be a nice thumbnail, including the little pig's bottom hiding behind the uh, gravel block there. There we go, and then just minimise that. Okay, so what we can see, oh, a ladder, let's try a ladder. Jake wants to try a ladder. Um, and so what we're going to do is I'm going to just build another one here. And then let's try. Now, a ladder, if I'm right in saying, has to be built onto the side of something anyway. So we'd have to put a ladder there. And then get rid of the white and the ladder pops. So the ladder is actually destroyed and becomes an entity again, which we can then pick up into our inventory. So block types are really quite, it's important to understand that because the last thing you want to do is you want to build something and then you built it out of the wrong material. And, and by that, what I mean is let's take some uh, sand. Sand's a good one. And what I'll do is over here, I'll do a slightly different experiment. So let's just do, oops. So quite often when we're doing our, uh, we do quite a lot with ancient Egypt and the kids are encouraged to, to make uh, pyramids and tombs and things like that. But if I put in sand, you'll see that you get lots of different types of sand. So if we're dealing with just blocks, we get sandstone. We have chiseled sandstone, cut sandstone, and smooth sandstone. And then we've got the different red types as well. Let me, um, but let's try these for the moment. So we've got this one, this one, this one. And then we might as well, trust me, to get rid of the one that I wanted to use. And then let's just go back in and get that smooth sandstone again. There we go. So let's try this. Smooth sandstone stays. Cut, chiseled. What's this stuff? Just sandstone. Yep, sandstone, sand. And so sand was the only one that fell. Everything else stayed where it was. And so what's really what's really interesting about that is that when we decide to build pyramids, if we build a pyramid from sand, uh, smooth sandstone. So let's get some smooth sandstone and we'll build a pyramid. Three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. And then actually I'll build one slightly bigger than this. There we go. And then to get me started, I'm just going to build one on the side there. Makes sense, right? And then we're going to build one on the side there. So there we go. It's a nice little pyramid. We could do that on a massive scale. But what if we tried that with sand? So I'm going to build our little side piece here. And then to get started, I'm just going to build one on the side. Oh, one on the side. And that is not going to work. We're going to have to fill that out and then we're going to have to fill that and then we're going to have to fill that. So if we break a hole in the side of this one, we can see it's hollow. But if we break a hole in the side of this one, it's solid. It has to be solid because we can't use sand to build like that. Now, that's not to say that that makes it a bad material. It just makes it a different material. And we have to think about the science. We have to think about the engineering um, of doing that. Here's the other thing. If I, let's just say we're going to do that. And then I'm going to build on top of that a pile of sand. What happens now if I knock this one away? They all move. So they all fell down there. Let's do that again. And every time I take one away, we're just going to keep falling. And so that's actually a bit of a pain when you try to destroy something. You think, right, I'll destroy that and I'll destroy that. And it just falls. Um, 
So sand can actually be, sand, gravel, concrete powder can be quite difficult. Um, that's the other thing if you want to do, say, a line of it. So say we had a line of it. And then we put some, uh, let's put some red sand up here now for a difference. Put some red sand up here. If we get rid of that bottom row, it will all fall down in a row. And so understanding the mechanics is really, really important. Baramok, great to have you in. Um, thanks uh, very much for joining. I'm glad this is helpful. And so a lot, again, beginners to Minecraft, particularly teachers that I'm working with in the education field will say, I tried building this thing the other day and we were doing this thing on pyramids and I couldn't build a pyramid because I wanted to build with, and I say to them, what did you do? And they say, well, I got some sand and then I tried, but it just kept sort of falling in on itself and it took me way longer than it should have. And I say to them, build with sandstone or build the frame with sandstone. So what we often get the kids to do is build the frame. So the kids will do, uh, I'm just building a frame now. And then what they would do is they would still make it hollow. So they would have, I'm just going to do one corner rather than a whole pyramid, but they would build this as their frame, just like we did up there. And then to give it the effect that they want, because they want it to look as if it's covered in sand, for example, they would, they would do that. They would cover it in sand. So they put a layer of sand at the bottom. Then they put a layer of sand above. And this is giving them a solid frame, but with the impression that it's covered, buried in sand, perhaps. So if you want to bury something in sand, there we are. So you've still got the pyramid effect, but you've got it, you've, you've created a framework for it. And that's, that's actually quite, uh, quite nice for the kids to, to consider. So that's gravity. Let's move on to something a little more, uh, still sticking to the theme of gravity, um, but, but something slightly more um, challenging. Here's an interesting thing actually. That's this, when the world is spawned automatically, gravity doesn't apply at first. So you'll notice that there's gravity not being applied to these gravel thing. They, this should have fallen in the water by now. All of these, in fact, should have fallen in the water. And what tends to happen is that happens when you disrupt because the game has been loaded. This is where it was meant to be placed. Gravity is not in effect. Um, so you might see little anomalies like that, like this one over here. Here's another one. These should have fallen by now. So let's see what happens if I place one on them. Nothing. There we go. But as soon as I placed something on top, it all collapsed. So there we go, the whole lot collapses. Let's try, there's another two there, so let's just place one there and we create that hole. So quite often you'll find in a world, and this is good to know that sometimes you're like, oh, I was building in this area and I built my house and then I went above it to put a roof on and it all just collapsed. And it's because you haven't checked the material status of the world at spawn. So if we do this, and then this one, all of that falls into the sea and we suddenly have what it should have looked like in the first place. So just keep an eye on that. Um, so what I now want to do is show you something else that still sticks to the lines of gravity, but it's a different material together. And that is, let me just clear my inventory, that is water and lava. Water and lava are liquids in Minecraft and therefore have a gravitational effect. So let's just put the water on this wall here. I'm just gonna make it come out of a hole Whoops, see what I did there? Let's do that and then let's have the water go there. And you'll see that the water falls and then runs like a waterfall. I gave it its source. We're gonna do sourcing in a second, but I gave it its source and it fell. Water is also spreadable. So if we head over to, I'm just looking for a nice flat area, this one here, 
and we just place a block of water, it will spread out and you'll see that it actually gets thinner. See that? Compared to its center point. This block here, I'm not sure if you can see it, but if I hover over the top and just do this, you'll see that there's a clear block in the very middle and then everything else has an animation to it. Everything else has a blue um, kind of strobing animation. This is because everything else is running water and the center is still. Now, if I get myself some stone and I say, what if I place a block here? Nothing. What if I place a block here or here or here? Nothing. But what if I place a block on the still, what we call the source of the water? It kills it. So we'll do that one more time. And then we'll place a block on the source. Kill the source and you kill the water. So again, lots of teachers will message me and they'll say, I was working on this world and I was doing this lesson and I wanted to add a small pond and now my whole world's flooded and I don't know how to get rid of it. Um, you can kill the source. Now, another way you can do that, let's just get our water back, is we can go in and we can get sponge. Now there's wet sponge and there's ordinary sponge, but we can get ordinary sponge and we can say, what if I put that there? And you'll notice that it got rid of the water in a radius. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put a bunch of these waters around. There we go. So we flooded a large area. That's also, there's a bit of an error there, so we'll get a piece of water there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some sponge and just put it here. And you'll see that that got rid of some of it, but it keeps coming back and it's because the sources are still too great. So we need to kill the sources. Now that doesn't mean to say that we have to put a piece of sponge on the source. We just have to, Lanny Watkins, great to see you in. We just have to put enough sponge around to kill, there we are, the variety of different sponge, uh, of sources. And now what we have is wet sponge because that's now holding the water. I prefer to just kill the source if you can. Sponges are used for getting rid of large areas of water that are kind of pre-established. If we go down to uh, this river, for example, we could place a piece of sponge there. It's just going to keep coming back. What if we just... Yeah, there we go. We've finally created some damage and that water won't come back now. Sorry, fish. Sorry, little guys. Um, I'll put the water back. There we are. And they're happy. Happy salmon. Um, <clears throat> so, water is really important. Now, lava is the same, except... Now, sorry, before we do lava, let me just show you. If I'm in uh, creative mode and I go underwater, nothing happens. But if I switch my game mode to survival, you'll see at the very bottom of the screen and above, you'll see there's some bubbles, blue bubbles, they're disappearing. So we've got six, five, four, three, two. This is my air. I'm running out of air because I'm swimming. And now I'm dying. Now my hearts are going down because I'm struggling to breathe. Here we are. And now that I'm above, my bubbles are coming back. Now, you might be thinking, but well, that doesn't apply to me because I'll just be making the worlds. But it will apply to your students. If your students are doing a given world, say we were doing the Vikings, for example, and you knew that you wanted a huge river for the children to be able to cross, and but they had to do battle with another Viking clan there, or they had to do battle with the Brits or the French as part of a, histo as, you know, a historical recreation. And if they fall in the water, they're susceptible to that drowning. And so we just have to be aware that sometimes our game modes affect the way materials affect us. So have a think again ahead. It's all part of your lesson planning. I'm going to need a river. My children will be in survival mode, which means the river becomes a threat to them. So do I want to create safe passage over the river or do I want to make the river shallow enough so it's not a threat? Or maybe I do. I mean, over here in, in Scotland, there was a famous battle with the English and the plan uh, the, the, the Scottish warriors knew that the English would be wearing armour and they knew that their horses would be heavily laden too. And so they led them into a, 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 what we call a small burn, um, which is a river. And the, the knights uh, fell into the water, the English armoured 
um, soldiers fell into the water and they drowned because they couldn't get out and they were easily held down or they were easily um, slowed down and many of them drowned. And so that's it's brutal, but it's it's a historical reference that we can talk about um, and the river maybe becomes a part of that. And so uh, we did the refugee crisis recently and one of the things we had to consider was the Mediterranean Ocean. What does it look like for someone to get in a boat and cross the Mediterranean Ocean? And if that boat fails in Minecraft, what then? Can they swim? Are there threats in the water? What about the temperature? And we can code things like that. Um, we can code if person, if player is in water for this amount of time, then make this happen. And we can do all sorts of coding with materials. So thinking about these is not just, oh, Minecraft happens to have some blue stuff in it that, that kind of acts like water. Actually, we can play, we can experiment with stuff like that. So let's do lava now. Lava is roughly the same. I'm going to use this little space here and we're going to place a block of lava down. But you'll see that lava spreads much thicker. It's almost like pouring honey instead of pouring water and it doesn't spread quite as far. But the same principles apply. We can stick a piece of stone in here and we can get rid of the lava if we block the source. Let's see what happens if we pour water over here. If I pour water here, that didn't work for some reason, or that, there we go. It got rid of the grass, you'll see, and actually if I drop an object in it, so let's drop some sponge in it, you'll see that it actually flows outwards. There we are. If I try to walk against that, that's me walking against the tide, this is me walking away from the tide. So water has a, a, a motion it has a, and it would be true if you were walking against flowing water it would be more difficult right and so even the pig's struggling the pig's struggling to get out of the water just keeps getting washed back into the pond let's try something else let's try lava here and immediately our trees have gone on fire And so lava has different, pro oh, it's killed the pig. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, pig, pork chop anyone. And so the tree, and the tree really is going. I mean, that tree is, run away lava, run, uh, llama, run away. And so our trees have burned down. So again, as a material, the difference between water, and actually one of the questions might be, and this is gonna raise a whole bunch of new questions, but what if we put water down to save there we go, we stopped it. The trees are just going to burn, we're just going to have to live with that, although we could spray water on top of this tree, there we go. And then we can sponge it up. Oh, the tree's still on fire. We can sponge this up and we can sponge this up, there we go. And what we're left with is stone that wasn't there before and this interesting material, I'm going to talk about that in a second. But let's finish lava first of all, let's stick some sponge in here. Nothing. It kills it, it just doesn't actually soak up the lava. So lava's dangerous. A lot of people will do something like, they build a little house. I've literally seen this, where they build a little house. Say this is the wall of your house. And then they build a little chimney at the back. And they're like, that's it. And then to make it nice and cozy, they put a little lava thing in and they're like, ah, oh, that's lovely, whoops. And before you know it, their house is on fire. And genuinely, it's one of my biggest, in the beginning, certainly after I've done some trainings and I've even done this with them, I have teachers coming to me and saying, so I built this village. We were doing this eco village yesterday and I, and I came in this morning and, and my house is gone and it's not always lava sometimes it's fire which I'll also show you in a second but generally it's gone it's on fire and they're like oops having said that this is a great mechanic this is how we burned down the house uh Pennycook house um burned in 1899 and we had the children relive the we built the house one-to-one -one scale we finished it as a Victorian neo-palladian house it was beautiful they did bedrooms they did servants quarters they added the floors and and then we set fire to it and we just burned the whole thing down again and the kids got to relive that night of 1899 by using fire mechanics um, and soon you'll see that the house 
is gone. Little House not on the prairie. Um, little House was on the prairie, <laughs> but is isn't anymore. It's a blast from the past. Hey, little guy, leading his llamas around. Um, and so, lava is really important to consider. And lava has the same sort of mechanics as water. When it hits, it falls. Then it spreads. Then it falls. And it will continue to... I know dramatic stuff. Look, the house is gone. Um, and it will continue to fall. So just keep that in mind as well, because quite often... Um, and in fact, let me show you a, a great world that we use for... Uh, lava because people will then say to me well how like what's the point of of the lava but if i show you for example our pompeii world we can actually relive pompeii and we can show what that might look like having a real volcano inside this so i'll just show you for those of you who haven't seen this this is our pompeii world hidden in uh contained inside a toy box and you can see there that our creative our builders have made a fire extinguisher um, just in case and if we head over to the actual volcano itself you'll see that we've got the lava at the top with the ash cloud and if we were to do that we would end up with well that didn't work that's interesting come on do it again there we go that's it. Oh, that didn't work. We'll need to do that one then. There we go. And suddenly we have an erupting volcano, which is just going to continue to fall all the way down. We actually have a different version of this. And actually, I really need to stop this. <laughs> like, I really need to stop this. Ah, OK, OK, OK. <laughs> Whew, that could have been dangerous because I haven't copied this world, which means I would have to go and get an, another version of it somewhere or make it new. Um, but basically what would happen is the lava would come down, it would burn the orchards, it would get into the buildings and it would spread through the city. And that's the whole point of that lesson is, uh, is the lava flow of Pompeii. So I'm just going to pop that back and pop that back and then you'll see that I can hopefully rest a little That was dramatic stuff. I could have lost my world there by doing a demo. Hey guys, check this out. Oops, there we go. That's just made it dark because we're underneath. And they say that actually, they say that over the, um, after the, uh, it erupted, it became almost like nighttime. It was very difficult to see anything because of the ash cloud that covered um, hundreds of miles. And so we can actually use, and just to head around the back there, we can see we've split the volcano down one side just to show how a volcano is formed as we head back out. And so we can kind of see uh, what that looks like. <coughs> and so lava is useful for us. All of these materials, sand is useful for us, gravel is useful for us, water and lava are all useful for us. But as materials, we just have to be respectful of the different types of mechanics that they have. There we are. Um, yeah. So we did lava. What else are we going to do? We're gonna, oh, yeah, I didn't show you. Um, so fire has the same thing, but there's no such thing as fire. If I type fire, I can have a campfire. By the way, campfires are a safe way to have a little fire in your home. So you can build your little house with your little fireplace and say that's going to be my fireplace or alternatively build your fireplace out of stone um, and then what we can do is we can either put a campfire down low and that's quite nice or we can build a campfire right where we want it and it will not burn so if you want to do something like that um, create a, a space and use a campfire instead. I'm just gonna show you how else we use these because again, materials are, are a little hint and tip. How we use campfires is if I show you my, I need to try and work out which world is, where... 
There's Pompeii again. Oh, I do have a second version of Pompeii. Thank goodness. So if we take the refugee crisis, for example, and then I'll also show you our math apocalypse world and how we've used campfires to great effect in there. Um, yeah, so with our refugee crisis world, you'll see that as we come into the village, Oh, no, I didn't on this one. Interesting. That must be a new one. Anyway, what I would do is I would start to replace these now because it used to be that in order to create fire, you would have to use, and this is a good lesson actually at this point, you would have to use nether rack because if I take a flint and steel, you're not able to just get fire other than campfires. But if you were, if you take flint and steel and you set fire to a piece of concrete, eventually it will go out. Set fire to some stone, eventually it will go out. He says. It certainly should. There it goes. So the concrete went out, that concrete went out, that stone will eventually go out. But you'll notice that these ones are perpetual. They are the stone that the, the, the earth has gone out. These ones are perpetual, and the reason they are is because we've used underneath them nether rack. And that's a great way of just creating a fire. So if I want it to look as if this town for our refugee crisis map, this town is under siege, then we can make it look uh, so by having fires in places. You'll notice that I've put fires in the roof there. And to do that, if I just put this fire out, I've added some of that. What we can then do is use uh, flint and steel to set fire to things. But that will eventually go out if it's not the right material. What I've now started to do is add to that some campfires. And so campfires give us the impression, if I just put a campfire in there now and there, as well as setting fire to those again, it now gives us the impression of smoke in a war-torn space, for example. Um, we can add another one down here. I've already done this, so this must be an older version of this world. Um, and then let's get another one. Let's just tuck one in there. And actually, we'll tuck it down one, so it's not as obvious. There we are. Another hint for, uh, for these is if I place one campfire here on top of any material, like concrete or stone or whatever, but I also take a hay bale. I'm just going to place it that way just in case and then put it on there. Watch what happens to the smoke on the hay bale. So there's our, there we are. So the smoke on the hay bale actually goes way higher. So if you want that effect, you can create that and it looks as if there's been some sort of war and and, uh, and so on but it, it does mean that you know if the kids move the campfires uh, during using your worlds they're going to go oh there's a hay bale under here and you're like yeah there's a hay bale under there because it's the effect that i wanted or whatever um you also need to be careful about having hay next to fire um because that will go on fire but i'm going to put that one there and so on uh, let's just do one more so it's visible from afar let's do one There. This is an, a, a pub on fire. That doesn't really matter. There we go. And so that's going to give us the effect that things are on fire. So that's another nice material to recognise the use of. Let me show you how I get. I mean, it's a similar thing, but if I show you our math apocalypse world, I can show you how that was used as well. <clears throat> math apocalypse. If anybody, so there we are. Breaking math apocalypse. So similar thing, but we just decided that we were going to use that for. So with the plane crash, as soon as you enter this world, for example, there is a plane crash, and you'll see that we've automatically put some fire in there, and we put some smoke in there, which is nice. And then if we head off to the city. And you'll see that the city is held in the palm of a giant hand.
and as you near the city you see there's an issue with the bridge because this is all about solving maths puzzles through a zombie apocalypse you'll see that the smoke begins and as we head through the city this is there's fire and smoke everywhere and so stuff like this is really really important for effect and materials can give you that effect um there we go and so let me just save and quit this world we'll go back to our demo world because i want to show you a bit of coding and how we can play with materials in coding as well so we'll go back to our materials world And then what I'm going to do is to press C. And now I need to remember something here. This is going to take my camera away, which is fine if I just do code. You should now be able to see my code builder moving up. There we are. And I'm going to add um, new project. And that new, new project is going to be called materials. And now using code builder, I can code directly into Minecraft. But here's the thing. What I can do is on chat command, um, grass, if I go to blocks, I can play around with coding with different materials. So I'm gonna do fill with grass, that's our materials list there, fill with grass from, and then we're gonna do my location, my location, my location, so exactly where I am, to 10, 10, 10. So this is gonna go 10 in one direction, 10 up, 10 in uh, north, 10, I think it's 10 east, sorry, 10, it defaults to west, 10 west, 10 north, 10 uh, directly up, and press play. So now, if I press T and type the word grass, I end up with a big block of grass beside me. Let's do that again. T, oops, grass. But the question is, what if I do, press C key, what if I do, where's gravel, gravel, gravel? What if I do gravel? Grass. I just typed grass anyway because it's the same code. And suddenly, and see how it's landed. It's responded to the land below it. So we've ended up with this amazing structure. What if we did it over these trees? I know it says grass, I'm just because just I haven't changed the thing, but what if it falls? So it falls in response to. So here's an interesting thing. What if we wanted to do, I'm just going to try this and see what happens. What if we wanted to do, not 10, 10, 10, what if we wanted to do just 5, 20, and 5? What if we wanted to do Hadrian's Wall, but didn't want to have to build it so that it was exactly straight? Because we happen to know that things like Hadrian's Wall were built across landscapes and they flowed with the landscapes and actually what we're then going to do is we're going to make it yeah gravel's the best way to make it so let's try this i'll show you a really neat little piece of code so let's try it here and do and actually we'll just we'll change it to wall so we're going to do hadrian's wall the roman wall in the united kingdom that the romans built because the scots were too scary, basically. I challenge the Italians to tell me differently. <laughs> um, wall. And what we end up with, oh, that's still, that's not long enough, actually. So let's try 40, 5 and 5. And actually, 5 is a bit too high. So let's try 43 and 5. And now that I know which way it's running, I could always... I've changed the way it was running, but let's try it over here now and see if we can get it to run from here. So let's do wall. And what we end up with is that we end up with a wall that runs along the scenery. 
and then we can move along and we can do that again. So what if we wanted to do it? I'm just going to assume that it was here. Oh, that was almost, oh, that was almost on time. And what we can do is we can run. We can fill in the gaps there. But we're now starting to create a wall that actually follows the scenery rather than, this will be an interesting one, which is what they did. They, they didn't build straight walls. They built walls that followed the curves of the land, especially as they became more and more time served and more ruined as well. And so that's what we can do. What we can then do is, and this is just a little hint, this is not one that I would, yeah, right? That's right. I, I, I'm actually going to do a um, Baramok. If you're subscribed on Twitch at all, or if you want to follow me on Facebook or Twitter, one of our streams coming up later on in the month is a coding building kit. Um, basically, a whole bunch of things that you can do that creates things like mass building tools, erasure, uh, uh, sorry, erasers, painting tools, uh, all using code. Um, I've got a whole what, what what I call my pencil case whole pencil case of coding that allows you to do that. But one of the other things you can do is you can do this. On player fly, go into blocks and go to replace with, this is a replace with one, replace with, and we're just, just to make this obvious, I'm going to replace it with something totally obvious like brick, brick, brick. I love how that's actually called brick, brick. Or brick block. I was like brick brick. Um, and we're going to do gravel in this one. So what we're basically saying there is, as the player flies, replace with brick when the block is detected as gravel from, and I'm just going to do 5, 5, minus 5, minus 5, minus 5, 5. So that means 5 in that direction and 5 up and then minus five from me in that direction, because that's my minus, I am zero, and then minus five ahead to me, to five behind me, and then minus five below. So basically a cube all around me. And then I'm gonna press play. And what I'm gonna do is, as I, as I fly down to this wall and go past it, I can change it to whatever I want, because it's detecting for, it's searching for gravel, and then, it's changing that gravel to what I want it to be. And then what we can do is we can now have, now obviously our Roman wall didn't look like this, but I wanted to just create an obvious change from the gray to the red. But as I fly around, we now have a wall which we can play with, right? So this is just part of my building pencil case. This is the kind of stuff that I do all the time to try and get. So people say to me, how did you do that? How did you build Hadrian's Wall? Because what I would have done, and Hadrian's Wall would probably have been something slightly different. In fact, for Hadrian's Wall, I would have used um, a custom texture. But let's just go to stone bricks instead. And actually to make it, we'll just do cracked, where's cracked? Cracked stone bricks. So that's that one actually. Change with Cracked stone bricks. Where did I where did I see those? Why are they escaping me this time? There we are. Cracked stone bricks when material is brick block. Press play. And then we can head down. This is the thing. When Code Builder was added, so there we go. When Code Builder was added, people said to us at the time, um, I, but I don't do coding. You know, like genuinely, that that's not going to interest me. And so I've spent the last three years basically saying to people, but if you did do coding, look at what it can do for you. It's an inbuilt paintbrush. It's an inbuilt tool. And all you have to do is, you don't even have to learn code code. You just have to know what it is that you want to do and how code can help you do that. That's more like it. That's more like a Roman wall. And so before you know it, you've got this great Roman wall. So think about what we did. I'm just going to repeat that there. I'm just going to, for, for materials, understanding materials is really, really important. I wasn't trained as a coder, but I am a coder. And, you know, and, and I tell teachers that I am a coder. In fact, let's just to prove the concept, do this with sand. So let's get ourselves some sand in there. So I started by saying I want 
when I type the word wall, we are going, let's try 50. I, I'm always just aware that, in fact, let's try 70. <laughs> there we go. I want to fill from my location, 70 in this direction, three high and five wide. And I, that doesn't really matter down there, with sand. Then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to replace with, uh, when I fly, I am going to replace with cracked stone when block is sand in a radius, a five by five radius play. So let's do both of those pieces of code. So we're going to type wall. There we are. And we're going to create a nice wall. Let's see if we can build it over the river. And let's get nice and high so we can see it fall. There we go, it's gonna go over there. Oh, and it fell in there. And then what I'm gonna do is, as I fly around automatically, because I've got two pieces of code running at once, I'm gonna change that to stone. And so we can have our pretty ru ruined model wall. Um, Catherine, I hope Jake is already on this and working this out. We can even do it under the water because it will work under, oh no, it won't. It'll only work so high on, in fact, that's a good little puzzle. Um, can anybody tell me what I would need to do to get the stuff that was underwater? Who wants to drop into the chat what it is I need to do to get that to work? <laughs> I'm just gonna finish this wall off. Um, and then you can have a look. So that's what our wall suddenly looks like. That took seconds. That that took less than a minute for me to do that. Um, oh, that one. Oh, you know what? That one didn't fall. That's interesting. That didn't fall because as it fell, I probably moved, which meant because I was flat. In fact, that's a brilliant idea, right? Let's get high enough up. And let's try a, let's try capturing a wall in flight. This is now I'm just doing this for funsies. So we're going to type wall, and then I'm going to fly around. Oh, I only caught the initial bit, so you're not allowed to catch it as it falls. Let's try again, just in case. No, that fell and I didn't catch any of that for some reason. No, I'm not allowed to catch any of it, but that's okay. That didn't work. Um, get that. Hi, Jake. I get that. And so can anybody tell me what I need to do to stop marketing plum? Plum 44 says, hi. Hi, marketing plum. Welcome. Um, to get the stuff in the water, which was over here, I need to go to the code. There's one there that didn't work. There we are. And I need to go C, on player, swim water. And now, when I go under, it will catch, because it's just changed my behavior. It said, oh, right, right, so, excuse me. So when you're swimming, instead of flying, so you'll notice now that I'm flying, it won't change. I could have both though. I mean, I could just take that and go, and then change that one to fly. And that means that I now have, when I'm flying and when I'm swimming, I'm changing that material. So materials, and you'll notice that I'll, I'm gonna do that there. So when I fly, and when I fly that happens, and when I swim, the deeper ones happen, like there. So now we have two pieces of code running at once. So the materials side of things are super important. Understanding how they work, what they can do and why is really important. What we could also try, now this is the one thing I don't think the coding does. Let me just try this before I finish the stream. Replace with water, sorry, replace with air where we find water. Let me see if that works. I seem to recall that this didn't work. Maybe they fixed it since, but I tried it once for a flooding map that I was doing for flood, looking at flooding. Yeah, if I fly around, it will not get rid of water. Replace with air when block is water and it's not doing it. 
I'm going to try and see if there's different types of water, but I don't think there is. We can type water and there's only one. So for some reason, replace with air when block is water doesn't work. But if I do replace with air when block is stone, it's getting rid of all the stone. So I'm not sure why, but water doesn't respond. It's a bug, I imagine. Um, I wonder if it works the opposite way. Replace with water when block is air. Five in a row. Oh yeah, it does. So it works the opposite way round. Oops, this is going to be messy. And then I'm just going to disengage that. I'm going to go back into code and disengage and then see what damage we've done. There we are. We've just basically created a massive flood. And so that's okay. That's okay. That's actually a really nice way of filling. Um, so here's, here's a thing. This could be interesting. This has turned into a coding uh, thing, but that's okay. What if we did this one here and we did replace with water when block is air, and then I'm just going to do zero and minus five. And that means I don't want water to be above me. I only want water to be at my feet. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to walk through this valley. And what we can do is we can fill up the valley with water. So you want a river that's higher than all the other rivers? Maybe you want to do that. Coding 101, look at that. Beep, 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 beep. So if you're just wondering how to get that, oh, that's because I'm now swimming. Uh, no, I'm still flying technically, so that's good. So this should all work. We'll fly through. And then I'll just give it a very, very brief once over here and then back round again, and then I'll look to see what that looks like and how we've done. I mean, with you, there's probably little details that we have to fix and fill out, but largely, if I go up now, oh, oh no, that was my fault. That's, I ruined it, right at the end, I ruined it. But that's okay, you get the idea. Um, because I lifted up instead so I could go and see what I'd done. But really, that's a great way of filling a gap um, that you wanted filled with water. Um, so what we were doing in room 117 was we were doing a thing where we said um, that the water would be rising in a given location. So say, for example, we wanted the water to rise here. So I'm just going to take this location. Now, I'm going to test this. Uh, 24177 minus 130. Then I'm going to go over to here and do two three eight seven seven minus one three four. I'm taking my um, my coordinates in the top right, uh, sorry, top left hand corner. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say in code, I am going to say. gameplay. Let's try this. So I'm going to do rain. Set weather to rain. So on chat command rain, set weather to rain. Then I'm going to do a timer. I'm going to say wait for 5000 milliseconds, five seconds. And then I'm going to do fill with blocks fill with water from, and we're going to do minus 24177 minus 130. Whoops, that's my fault. I didn't do tab 77 minus 130 to minus 23877 minus 134. Then I'm going to do weather clear. So let's see if this works. So what I'm saying, computationally thinking, I'm saying when I ask it to rain, make it rain for five seconds and then flood this area. 
then make the weather clear again. So let's see if this works. So T, rain, enter. So it's going to rain. It's going to rain for five seconds and then we're going to <laughs> not get water. Ah, why? Well, see, this is this is the problem I had with it. Fill with water from and to. I didn't get that wrong, did I? Let me just double check my my maths and uh, my my coordinates there. Let's just two three eight seven seven one three four two four one seven seven minus one thirty minus two three eight. One. Yeah, I got it right. So let's try it again. Rain. And after five seconds, flood. <laughs> it didn't work, right? Okay, there's something. I, see, this is a bug, right? Because as far as I'm aware, uh, yeah, it replaces what it should be. Hollow outline, keep destroy. Yeah, if I just if I just take that, let me just let's just test it one piece at a time. And I'm just gonna make that command X. So let's just see if the water works. X. No. So we have to yeah, yeah, exactly, right? Let's debug this. So let's try and find out what's going on with this because that Oh, no, you know what I'm doing wrong? Can anybody tell me what I'm doing wrong? I can see it. Did it, did it, did it. I warned about this on the last two streams that I did, and I've fallen for my own trap. I've ignored my own warning. Jake, you should know this because I've said it twice on two separate streams. I know what it was. So, yes. So what we've done is, uh, it's not the minuses, no Barimok. The minuses are really important. So you'll notice if I go down to the ground and you'll see that it is in fact minus 24177 minus 130. And I did put those in. So let's have a look. They're definitely in. So it is that. Jake or Catherine who's um, commenting on Facebook is absolutely right. It's my coordinates. I'm using relative coordinates, which means I've made a flood somewhere relative to me, 241 blocks away, 130 blocks away, and 77 blocks higher than me. These are relative coordinates with the little tildes. What we need to do is we need to take those uh, positions and we need to make them world positions. That is really, really important. And I'm glad we actually fell for that. I do when I'm doing it. And I'm glad I did because here's, what's, here's the thing. And, and actually, here's a little hint. If you don't want to recopy them you just go in there and you can see them above two uh, minus two four one i'm glad i did because i fall for this a lot and there's a lot of times teachers will say to me my coding didn't work what is it and it's that so somewhere <laughs> it's flooding right um nice one jake i'm glad it's you that's typing minus uh two three eight seventy seven minus one three four now what we can do is now that they've been filled in I'm just going to pop them up there I'm going to press play and we're going to do x yay right okay do you see what that did so I'm going to sponge that and get rid of it um, so now what we can do is we can say we can do our little piece of code and then let's just get weather clear at the end whoops yeah so let's try that now. So our piece of code says on chat command rain, make it rain, wait five seconds, flood, weather clear. So I'm going to press play and we're going to do rain. And it's going to rain for five seconds. And if it rains too long, we get flooding, right? So room 117, you can see how we did that. Um, and so what I could then do is I could then take the next area and say, well, actually, let me just get the coordinates for the, and this is how we did it when we did the previous one. We did, my, uh, it was a really big, and we just kept upping it like one meter of, at a time, one block at a time, 78. I'll show you the world we did it on, one, two, five. Um, and then I'm just gonna go over to there, and I'm gonna say, 
minus 2, 3, 4, 78, minus 1, 3, 6. We also, the way we did it was we detected for rain. And rather than making it rain, we did a detect for. And when the game rained, flooding automatically happened. And what the children had to do was work out where was best to build their home depending on the amount of rain in any geographic area, which is actually really important. I live on a flood, uh, a flood plain. I live on a flood plain. Uh, there's a river, a beautiful river called the River Tay. It's actually the, the biggest river in the UK. Um, it's the most, it's the fastest flowing and carries more water than uh, I think any other river in Europe, I believe. And when it floods, it's, it really floods. In fact, we have a bridge nearby, an old, old stone bridge from, you know, Victorian era. And every year that it's flooded, they've made chips in the wall to show like from like the 1855, this is where the flood was, Seven, you know, 1710, this was where the flood was. And it's, some of them are unbelievable. Like you're looking, you're standing at the bridge at river level and you're looking way up at these floods and thinking, that was where the water was. It's incredible. And so we have to think about those things. So that's what we got the kids to do. So then what we're going to do is we're going to go back into our flood. And I love that we're doing this after we started talking about gravity, moved into water, and then moved into water mechanics and coding. But I love stuff like this. Um, so then what we're going to do is we're going to do, wait another five seconds. Because if, if for every, in fact, let's make it 10 seconds, just to be fair to Mother Nature. We are going to take this again. Copy it. I'm just doing copy and paste, and then I'm going to give the new coordinates. So that's minus 244, 78, 125. That had to be minus 125, right? Yeah. That's good. That was lucky. And then minus 234, 78, minus 136. Really important that we get those right. Play. So now I'm just going to sponge this out. And what we should end up with is the longer the rainfall, the longer the rainfall we get, we're going to get some flooding after 10 seconds this time. And then we're going to, and then I'm like, ah, oh, it's torrential. It hasn't stopped raining for 10 hours. And of course, this is happening all over the world. This is happening in Wales right now. Um, and then suddenly, oh my goodness, suddenly we've got even more and then even more and then even more. And we could just continue to keep that flooding coming. And if you had a house, let's just say that your little house was this house here. So let's just clear that with sponge and do it one more time. I'm just going to sponge, sponge. Thank you. And then we had a little house. And our house was in this lovely little area here. In fact, I'll put a proper roof on. Let's get ourselves some stairs. They'll do. So there's our lovely little house. Nice door and a window. And what we're going to do is we're going to make it rain and we're going to see what happens. I did 10 seconds just to make it longer. I like that. It's been raining for so long we've ended. And then people look out the window and they're like, oh, that's not good. The pond's overflowing. <laughs> the fish have escaped. <laughs> and then I shouldn't laugh. That's some people's react. Boom! And there we go, look at that. And actually that you'll see that because I did replace in my code, because I did, uh, oh no, I did destroy. Actually, I didn't mean that. I meant replace. <laughs> because I did destroy in my world, it actually destroyed the materials. It destroyed the house. Um, and so if we get rid of that, we can then go and look at the damage to these people's property. Sorry, Mr. and Mrs. Minecraft, but your insurance will not be paying out for your house because of the SEPA flood map and you were built on a floodplain. And so 
I'm going to stop there because there's so much more. This has turned into a coding lesson, which I'm not against. I absolutely love it, but I, I, I intend to do um, lots and lots and lots of these streams. And so just to recap then, we started today by looking at materials and the material properties of things that fall due to gravity, water and lava. And then we started looking at how we can understand those materials in a building capacity. And so we built walls that we could drop from the sky using um, the types of material uh, like sand or gravel that would fall to build, say, Hadrian's Wall. And then we used coding to change that wall into some stone that looks more like a, an actual wall. And then we wanted to look at what would happen if we were to flood certain areas. So we used coding to create pillars of water. We made a giant river. We kind of raised the water level in the river. And we also then created, if I can find it, a little house. There it is. And it got flooded using a piece of code. So we've, we've covered a lot. And it's really just to get you to think as teachers or parents or artists or whatever it is you're doing with Minecraft, have a think. Um, and kids, of course, students, have a think about what is it I'm trying to achieve and knowing what the materials in Minecraft can do, knowing that water can flood, lava can burn, um, gravity pulls sand and, 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 and um, gravel, for example, down to the ground, but it doesn't pull stone and dirt, for example. Knowing that, what is it that you can build what is it that you can do that can create meaningful, relevant learning experiences in Minecraft? And the more you know, because I do get, and one of my mantras is you don't have to be the expert. But at the same time, as a teacher, as somebody hoping to create learning experiences with Minecraft, you kind of have to know roughly what the game does, roughly how to play it. You know some of the materials, maybe not all of them, but some of them, or at least know the right questions to ask because your kids will know. And you can say to your kids, tell me, what happens if I use water here? Your kids are going to go, well, that's going to happen. What happens if I use lava in a forest? Oh, it's going to burn down, miss. Right, so I'm not going to use lava to show you a model of X. So just know the right questions to ask around Minecraft. Um, Today we've explored history, for example, creating Hadrian's Wall, and we've also explored environmental studies, um, and particularly the environment um, and geography, just use it, uh, in particular flooding. So have a think about that. Um, this has been a great stream um, for me in terms of, um, I've made a few mistakes, which I keep an eye on with myself, and, and I love that. I hope it's been really great for you. Stay safe, uh, stay healthy, stay indoors. And I will see you in five hours time. Bye, everyone.